Okay, today's lesson is on the reactivity series, uh, which is all part of topic chemical reactions, uh, paper one GCSE chemistry. And the objective is to know the reactivity series of the metals. Uh, you should, you will be able to describe and deduce the reactivity of metals with water and with acids. And then explain the reactivity of the metals in terms of its tendency to form positive ions. As you know, metals uh, lose electrons to form positive ions. Moving on, we need to take a quick look at redox reactions. Now, redox reactions is where both reduction and oxidation are taking place. The simple definition, oxidation is where oxygen has been added, reduction is where oxygen is being lost. So, have a quick look at this, pause the video, and is the chemical in bold and underlined it being reduced or oxidized? You can pause the video here. Okay. Moving on then. This is the reactivity. When metals are placed in water or acids, they, they tend to react. Um, some react very quickly. Some react very slowly. Quickly will be something like sodium group 1 metals. Something that reacts very slowly will be iron. Iron, if you leave it outside, reacts with oxygen in the presence of water to form rust. So here's something for you to think about. Why do you think there's a difference in how metals react if they are placed in the same concentration of acids? What do you think is due to? Have a think of this. And here's a little clue to do with electrons. Let's have a look. So, this is it. The reactivity of metal is based on how easy it forms its positive ions by losing electrons. So it's all to do with the electrons. Obviously, if, it's, if a metal quite easily loses electrons, it is going to be very reactive. And a metal that doesn't lose electrons as easily, it's going to be less reactive. Gold and platinum are very unreactive as they very rarely, as they rarely form ions. Here's a table of metals. And first of all, we're observing the reaction with water, then with acid. And then I'm going to ask you to put place them in order of reactivity. Eight being the most reactive, and one being the least reactive. So what I, ha what I have done is... I've added a bit more information and I've also done three for you. What I would like you to do, please, pause the video here, copy the table and place the other five in order of reactivity. Don't forget, eight is the most reactive, one is the least reactive. You can pause the video here. One thing you'll have noticed is... When calcium reacts with water, bubbles of gas is formed. That gas is hydrogen. Copper doesn't do anything. Lithium, there you go, there's hydrogen. Uh, magnesium bubbles, again, cyanide, hydrogen gas is being produced. Potassium, sodium. Tin doesn't do anything. Zinc bubbles again. Bubbles are a sign of a chemical reaction taking place, as well as temperature change and then change in colour. If you have a look at the reaction with acids, again, bubbles... You can just see that. Lithium too dangerous to do. Gas produced again, that's bubbles, and so on. And if you've done this, the order of reactivity, what you should have got there. Copper is the least reactive. Potassium is the most reactive. And moving on from this. Progress check. In terms of electrons... Why your most reactive metal is the most reactive and why the least reactive metal from your table is the least reactive. So there's your table. So why is this the most reactive and why is this 
the least reactive. Have a go. You can pause the video here. Now you can self-assess this. So, potassium is the most reactive metal as it loses electrons and forms positive ions really easily. That's where it's the most reactive. Copper is the least reactive metal as it does not lose its electrons easily, which means it's more likely, more unlikely to form positive ions. I wonder how you got on with that one. Moving on. Now I'm going to, there are some following statements coming on the next slide. Uh, reading the statements, um, put the different images in order based on the reactivity. So if we look at the statements, you've got 11 statements here. Reading these 11 statements, you need to put them in this order. The most reactive at the top and the least reactive at the bottom. And one thing else you need to do in that list, I want to include hydrogen. So hydrogen needs to be included and it is less reactive than lead and more reactive than copper. So I'll go back to this. So read these 11 slides and put them in the correct order, starting with the most reactive at the top and the least reactive at the bottom. So there you go. But you can pause the video here. So what you should have got, let's have a look. This is what you should have got. Reading the statements, potassium is the most reactive, followed by sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium. Carbon fits in between aluminium and zinc. Iron, tin, lead. Then hydrogen, here, needs to be less reactive than lead but more reactive than copper. So this is where hydrogen fits in. And then copper, silver, gold, and platinum, the least reactive. Now, why do you think here, if you look at this extension, why are the two elements in italics and underlined? Why are these? What's so different about these to the rest of the elements? Well, I'm hoping you, you can see that the, the rest of them are metals. Carbon and hydrogen are non-metals. That's where they fit in. If we move on. Something for you to think about is to learn the reactivity series, create your own mnemonic to help you remember. Now here is a mnemonic. Please send lions, lions cats, monkeys and cute zebras immediately to lovely hot countries, signed General Penguin. Penguin. And that mnemonic helps you remember the correct order of the reactivity series. It is unlikely in the GCSE exam they will provide you with this reactivity series. So you, I would advise you to learn the correct order. Move on then from this. Answer the following questions. So there's some GCSE questions I'd like to answer. Look at this one. So you've got sodium at the top, copper increase in reactivity. Um, carbon is used in a blast furnace to obtain iron and zinc from the oxides. But electrolysis has to be used to obtain aluminium from its oxides. Draw an arrow in on the reactivity series above to show where carbon fits into the series. And this will be worth one mark. What you should have got is that. That's where carbon will fit in. We move on, here's another one. Small piece of lithium, potassium, sodium are added to water. What is the order of reactivities for these three metals? Put the most reactive metal first. It's only worth one mark. So you can pause the video here and have a look. And what you should have had, potassium followed by sodium, followed by lithium, one mark. And then complete and, and balance the chemical equation for the reaction of sodium with water. So you've got sodium reacting with water to make sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali, plus what else? Now from that table that you did earlier on, you should know that a gas is produced. And that gas 
is hydrogen. And that is the balanced equation. Here's another GCSE question. A student investigated simple cells using the apparatus shown in the figure below. You've got metal one, metal two, connected to a voltmeter. The electrolyte is potassium nitrate solution. If metal two is more reactive than metal one, then the voltage measured is positive. If metal one is more reactive than metal two, then the voltage measured is negative. The bigger the difference in reactivity of the two metals, the larger the voltage produced. So here are the results. You can see that. So look at the table below. Which one of the metals used was the least reactive? And then give a reason. You, you can pause the video here. What you should have got, the metal, copper, and the reason, there you go. Okay. And that's the end of this lesson on reactivity series.